O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. The star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. And coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary. They bowed down and worshipped Jesus. Gentile Christmas. Epiphany. And the epiphany light is shining bright, and it's shining on Christ. It's illuminating Jesus. And we learn from the Magi about worship, about where worship is directed, and who worship is about. We also learn what worship most certainly is not. We learn what worship is not from King Herod. He called the Magi, and he said, Go, search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me that I too may go and worship him. Herod wants to worship Jesus. Well, Herod, you have two eyes. You have two feet. You follow the star yourself. You don't need us. You go follow the star, Herod. But Herod will not. He wants to worship Jesus his own way. He wants to worship Jesus with his own style, with his own preferences. And Herod's worship includes infanticide. The death of Jesus and who caused the lives of the slaughter of the holy innocents. Any who get in Herod's way, for he's full of rage and jealousy. And any who get in Herod's way of being king, they'll be put down. They'll be put to death. Because Herod has no room for anyone else. No one else except for him. And all other kings will go away. And that's what Herod does. Herod sends out the henchmen. The chariots roll out as fast as they can, and the swords are drawn. And they're sent out to put those to death. Don't follow Herod's path. Don't follow Herod's example of worship, where it's all about you, where it's all about your preferences, and where you have no room for any others. Don't follow Herod's example, because he has the idolatry of the highest order. Idolatry of the highest order, it's all about you. It's all about yourself and no room for anyone else. Now follow the example of the Magi. The Magi example in worship is they have a focus. They have an eye set and fixed on Jesus. For true worship takes place where Jesus is. Where Jesus has come for the Magi. Where Jesus has come for the Jews. And where Jesus has come for sinners like you. And sinners like me. This is where true worship takes place. And true worship receives. Receives what God has come to give. And what God comes to give you is His Son. For God so loves you, He gives you His one and only Son. Whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. True worship receives what God comes to give. And the star that God placed in the sky highlights His Son. And the star is still shining. The star is shining bright. But this star is God's word. And this word of God is filled with Jesus for you. Psalm 119. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. The word of God brings Jesus over and over again. The star that God had placed in the sky was great. It was wonderful. It got the Magi in the ballpark, but it did not get them to the specific place of where Jesus is for the sinner. What the Magi needed was the Word of God, with the star, to show them where Jesus is for you. Where the Christ was to be born, in Bethlehem, in Judea. For this is what the prophets have written. This is what the Word of the Lord says. But you, O Bethlehem, the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a king who will shepherd my people Israel. Some 500 years before the birth of Christ, B.C., Micah preached it. He preached all about Jesus coming. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego preached it in the land of East. And so too did Daniel. And that word of God that went forth is now bearing fruit. It's now bearing fruit in the lives of the Magi because they believe it. They believe God's word. God's word's for them. And God's word is for you. The Magi trust and believe its word. 
And they go forth and they follow the star. They follow the star and it leads them to where Jesus is. Their commute is a little bit longer than yours. Their commute is to go to church because church is where Christ is. And he's the king of kings and lord of lords. But he's no king like this world has ever seen. King Jesus serves. King Jesus gives. King Jesus sacrifices himself for his royal priest. For you, my people. And the shadow of the cross runs deep. It runs all the way back to Jesus as an infant. Jesus as a child. Because Herod wants Jesus dead, and the shadow of the cross is already covering Jesus' life at the earliest stages. So the angel Gabriel goes back to work and preaches another sermon and proclaims it into the ears of Joseph. Take the child, take his mother, and get out of town. Head south, go to Egypt, flee, for it's not Jesus' dying time yet. It's not the time for his crucifixion. Jesus must first come and preach and teach why he comes to die for you, the sinner. And Jesus will be betrayed. His own people will deny him. And his own disciples will turn their backs on him. And Jesus will be crucified. He'll be buried for the Magi, for you, for me, and for the life of the world. Jesus suffers God's wrath for all of our sin. And he sets you free to live in him. King Jesus comes to serve. And now you come and worship him. We come with the Magi in worship of the King. The King of Kings and Lord of Lords were gathered here this morning to worship King Jesus, where Jesus promises to be. And what happens to the Magi as they worship Christ? They're filled up. They're filled up with exceeding and great joy as they see the King. John 1. To all who receive Jesus, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of a natural descent, nor of a human decision, but born of God. The highest worship of God. The highest worship of God is faith. F-A-I-T-H. Faith, trust, and believing in Jesus Christ is the highest worship of God. It's what the Magi have. It's what you have. It's what draws us here this morning. We gather together as the faithful people of God, hearing His word and receiving His gifts. And He fills you up with exceeding joy. Great joy. And what do the Magi do in response to seeing the King? They bring gifts. They bring offerings. They open up their treasures before the Lord. Their first gift, gold. Gold is the gift of royalty. Gold is a gift for the king of the highest order. And Jesus Christ is the king. They bring their frankincense. Incense is used in worship. And what incense does, it goes up. It rises up to God as a sweet smelling sacrifice. Psalm 141. Let my prayers rise before you as incense. And the lifting up my hands as the evening sacrifice. Your prayers this morning are heard by God, our Father, all for one reason. King Jesus. King Jesus brings your prayers. He brings your petitions. And he brings them before Daddy. And he says, listen to them. Listen to their prayers. All for the name and for the sake of Jesus. And myrrh. Myrrh is a beautiful perfume. And what myrrh is used for is buried. Buried. And your sins have been buried with Jesus. And Jesus rises from the grave to forgive your sins. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And we join with the Magi, shoulder to shoulder, in worship of our King. And we bring our gifts. We bring our offerings. It might look like an envelope. It might look like a check. It might look like cash or coins, but we bring our gifts to our King, our singing, our hymns, our prayers, our lives. There are gold, there are incense, there are myrrh. And when it comes to our gifts, they're not given to a church. That's where you give them, but they're not given to the church. They're not given to a pastor. 
They're not given to a budget, but rather our gifts are given to Jesus. King Jesus, in worship of Him. Because He's the center. He's the center of your life. He's the center of our worship. He's the center of the font, giving you His name. He's at the center of the altar, filling you with exceeding and great joy, filling you with His body and His blood. He's at the center of His Word, and He forgives all your sins. Jesus is at the center. And as we bring our gifts, they're in service to the gospel. That King Jesus' name may be heard, believed, and confessed among the faithful. And God's name goes forth. It's epiphany. Bask in His light. Live as children of light. And reflect His light in the world. A blessed epiphany. Christ's light has come. And He comes for you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Rejoice in our King's givings and His servant. God's people have the opportunity to sing. In the words of the offertory, 192, we stand for the offertory. <laughs> 